Hello and welcome to another tutorial offering mathematical support to Open University students studying the module TM111 Introduction to Computing and Information Technology. This tutorial is all about giving you little tips on how to make sure you don't make mistakes in doing our mathematical calculations. We're going to be given some technological problems and this is obviously going to involve some calculations, some mathematics and I think it's important to be able to break the problem down into smaller tasks then as you solve each of those smaller tasks systematically, this will help to reduce the number of errors. I think this can be best achieved by talking your way through the, the problem. Say what you are doing. Think you're actually describing solving the problem to another person. Describe every stage that we go through to solve the task. For instance, if I have a broadband speed of 20 megabits per second, and we want to represent this in scientific notation, then tell the story of the various stages. 20 megabits per second. Say what it is. 20 megabits per second. What is a mega? A mega is a kilo times a kilo. We're in the real world, the deanery world, don't forget. So therefore the, the kilo is a thousand. Therefore 20 mega is 20 times that million. So to convert it to scientific notation, we move the decimal point a certain number of places to the left until I end up between the first and second numbers. I end up with an answer of 2.0 times 10 to the power of 7, since I moved the decimal point 7 places. And then finally, don't forget in your answer to add the units. So here's another one, example about the file size. So how many bits are in a 1.5 gigabyte file? Again, tell the story, but sometimes it's important to put the key facts right up the front. For instance, remember, 8 bits make a byte. This is the binary world, so a kilo is 1024, so we don't make that mistake. What's a giga? Well, it's, it's 1024 times 1024 times 1024. Therefore, therefore 1.5 gigabytes is going to be 1.5 times that number number of bytes. And then I, we need to convert it to bits, so multiply by 8, giving me the final answer at the bottom of the screen there. Quite a, quite a big number. Mathematical communication is so important. If you were asked to write a report, you wouldn't just put down a list of words and expect the reader to fill in the gaps. Or just submit a conclusion and expect the reader to understand the reasoning behind your conclusion, no matter how sound it might be. Often students put down answers without showing any mathematical background to it at all, and they don't justify their answers. By just putting down an answer, if it's right or wrong, Basically, you'll get uh, very, very few marks. Getting the answer is not the way forward. What we like to see is the method that you use to get that answer. So right or wrong, it's always important to tell the mathematical story. Explain each stage that you've gone through to actually get to your solution. Even if your answer is wrong, there might be some marks for the working out, or at least your tutor will be able to tell you where you went wrong. Consider a simple calculation. 2 plus 5 times 2, plus 6 minus 4 squared. Now the evaluation of the above, if I'm trying to do it as a, on a calculator for instance, there might be a temptation just to do the calculation as we read it from left to right. So 2 plus 5 is 7, 7 times 2 is 14, 14 plus 6 is 20, then finally 20 minus 16 is 4. But this is the wrong approach. In mathematics, certain mathematical operators have a higher priority, for instance multiplication and division, have a higher priority in a calculation than addition and subtraction. And there's a simple acronym which will help us to remember this. It's called BIDMAS. You might have learned something similar to this at school. BIDMAS or BOMDAS. It stands for brackets, indices, division and multiplication, addition and subtraction. So therefore, uh, you know, this gives us an order in which our calculations will be performed. So now uh, we can perform the calculation properly. But again, I would say it's useful sometimes to put brackets around those higher order terms so that you can see what calculation you're going to be doing first. So in this particular case, I'll put brackets around the higher multiplication sign there, higher than the, the pluses and the minuses. So therefore, I'm going to do 5 times 2 first because my bid mass tells me brackets first. Then I'm going to work out the 4 squared because bid mass tells me work out any indices. So I'll end up with the final calculation of 2 plus 10 plus 6 minus 16, giving me a final answer of 2. When solving a problem, it is always important, I think, to have a feel for your answer. It's always important to try to do an estimation of a problem before you even really start tackling it. 
because sometimes if your final solution doesn't look right or it doesn't feel right, it often isn't. And the very nature of our subject means that we're going to be dealing with some very, very large numbers. And we're going to have to face the division and multiplication of such numbers. If we write the numbers out in scientific notation, then this often helps us simplify the calculation. The calculation can then be split into its two components. The left-hand side is called the significant, and the right-hand side is called the exponent. And if I, if I do some manipulation on two, sci num two numbers representing scientific notation, then I can just do the calculation multiplying the two significants together first, or dividing them, and then finally do the operation on the exponent. Allowing me to separate the problem like this allows me to manipulate my large numbers without uh, making too many mistakes. Generally speaking, we'll be looking at powers of 10. And just make sure you understand the laws of these exponents. If I multiply two numbers together, like 10 times 10 to a power of m and n, then if I multiply, I add those powers together. If I divide, I subtract those powers. Don't forget there is the fundamental zero component exponent of 10 to the power of zero represent one. In our calculations, surprisingly, uh, most of them involve three quantities. You'll be surprised in our subject how many formulae you'll come across which only involve three quantities. Usually they're all of the form of something like speed equals something divided by time, where something might be the number of bits moving down a network over a certain period of time. This would give us obviously a network speed measured in bits per second. Now, any of these three, any any of these sort of quantities in a in a in an equation, we can always rewrite it so that one of those quantities become the subject. So, if I start off with speed equals distance divided by time, then I can manipulate that equation so I get time equals distance divided by speed, and finally I can get distance equals speed times time. Now, if you're not too sure about manipulation of equations, then simply use that little triangle formula on the right there. Put the uh, shorthand notations in, so S for speed, D for distance, and T for time. And we can then calculate all the other two quantities by using what's called cover-up. So if I want to know what T is, cover up the T, and I see it's a D over S, distance over speed. And if I want distance, cover up the D, and I see that's S times T. If anything's above each other, it's divide. If they're next to each other, it's multiply. Just a useful technique to help solve those problems. So finally, let's have a look at an application. A 1.68 gigabyte file takes 10 minutes to download. What's my broadband speed? 1.68 gigabytes, we need to convert it into bits. And this is given by, remember we've seen this formula several times now, it's giga, so it's going to be 1024 times 1024 times 24, that gives me giga, multiply it by 1.68, but I mustn't forget to multiply it by 8 to turn it into bits. You can see there the answer, sort of 14 billion odd bits. 10 minutes is easy enough, I hope, it's 10 times 60, giving me 600 seconds. So my speed is going to be the number of bits that's been transferred divided by the time. And I'll end up with an answer of 24 million. This is a number in uh, decimal normal notation. We like to express our answers in scientific notation. So I'll move the decimal point between the 2 and the 4 and count how many times I move that decimal point, and that'll be 7. So I'll end up with a, an answer of 2.4 times 10 to the power of 7 bits per second. Now, I don't like representing lots of decimal places in some of my answers because the reader isn't really interested in the 8 and 1 and 7. They're two small numbers. We just want an order of magnitude. So turning an answer like 24 million into scientific notation, I might also do some rounding. And here I've rounded it to two significant figures. But don't forget, if I needed to use that number in further calculations, Never use rounded numbers in any further calculations. We only use rounding to show the reader an order of magnitude of our answers. So we only round when we're actually giving our final solutions. Well, that's the end of this tutorial. And just to remind you that um, other tutorials and other materials to support the maths of TM111 can be found on my website. Thank you for watching.